Okay, hi everyone. So this is our first tutorial and we're going to do some polygon modeling and make this book. All right, so in the previous video I showed you how to start a new file. I'm just gonna do that here myself. Make a new file, general is fine. I guess I'll save what I was doing here. Now, first of all, I'm gonna save my file. Just go save and you can see I've been doing this already. Um, here is the project I was previously working on and I'm going to call this Vanitas 2 tutorial version. Always better to use underscores instead of spaces when naming files. So I've got PN Vanitas underscore 1 tutorial version. Okay, so I'll save that file and we're good to go. Okay, so first of all, moving around the interface, um, I'm pressing here the middle button on my mouse um, to rotate around my cube. And if I press tab up and down here on my keyboard, that's my key caster casting, turn that on. Okay, so now you should be able to see here that I'm pressing the, the tab, tab key. All right, so what, what's happening here when I press tab, this is sort of very Blender 101, is watch the corner of my screen here, we're shifting between edit mode and object mode. And basically, object mode is when we deal with distinct objects that are here, seen here in our collection. When we start a new um, file, we have three objects in our scene. One is a camera. If I zoom out here with my mouse, you can see there's my camera. If I select this object here, that's the cube that's in the center of the screen. And if I select this one here, that's my light. Okay, so that's object mode. Edit mode, if I, if I go back to the cube in object mode, if I press G for grab, I can move the cube around, and if I left click, it'll stay where I've moved it, and if I hit Command Z, it will undo that move. <coughs> Excuse me. If I press G and grab it and press right click, it will sort of undo that movement that I was about to do. If I go to edit mode, You'll see that now, if I click on the cube, I can click on its individual components. In this case, they are, I'm clicking on vertexes. If I press G for grab now, it'll just grab one of those vertexes. I'll right click to undo that. If I go up here and I click this option, it'll let me select edges, which are the, um, the lines that connect two vertexes. So now, now if I press G for grab, I'll grab two edges. And if I select this option here, I'll grab faces, which are the polygons that are enclosed by uh, three or more vertexes or two or more edges. So usually either a triangle or a um, quad, which in this case is also a square because we're looking at a cube. Okay, also to shift between these three options, it's very common that we use the keys in our computer one, two, and three. And that just shifts, if I keep clicking one, two, three, one, two, three, you can see up here that I'm just shifting between these options. For any of you who've used any creative software before, you'll probably know that at the beginning, uh, you might have to search around for every single button to click, but the more you work, the more you start using keyboard shortcuts because it's just a little bit quicker. So there'll be quite a bit of that in this tutorial, but I'll try to um, explain all of the things that I, uh, all of the, the shortcuts that I use. And if I miss anything, hopefully my, my key caster um, up in this little edge here should show you which key I'm, I'm clicking. Okay, so let's make this book. All right, so if I press the key N, the letter N, like my last name, um, I'll bring up uh, some of the details about this object. Um, we've got all sorts of things here. The transform, the location, obviously tells us where it is in space. I'll set that back to zero, so it's in the middle of the space. The rotation, split onto three axes, X, Y, and Z, tells us which way the object is facing in space. I'll put them back to zero. And the scale, we could scale the object. Also, we have these dimensions. Now, dimensions in Blender, of course, this space doesn't actually exist. It just exists in our computer. But the two times when these dimensions, I think, become really relevant, one is when we 3D print something and it comes out into the real world, the dimensions become you know, very important. But two, when we're making animations and we might be, excuse me, <coughs> looking through, excuse me, looking through a camera, 
you know, a camera in Blender, it's, it's kind of like a camera in the real world. It has, if I go into the camera, it's got all sorts of measurements, like its focal length and, and its depth of field. All of these things use numbers, um, just like the light has a kind of a power, you know, how, like a light bulb, how many, how many watts of power does, does the light have? And so these numbers actually, if you use them correctly, it can make a lot of your 3D modeling more intuitive, especially if um, you want your render to kind of look good. So I think it's a good idea to use your dimensions here kind of accurately. So first of all, I'm going to just look at a book next to me. Okay, I think that book is about, I think it's about, you know, 22, 23 centimeters long. So I'm going to make the x axis 0.23, which would be 23 centimeters. And then it's about six centimeters high. So I'm going to use the z for the height. So I'll go 0.06 and it looks like it's about 18 centimeters wide so the y will be 0.18 okay so if i zoom in and now if your camera is not looking the right way and you want to move the camera across like this you hold down the shift key and then press your middle mouse button another trick you can do if you have a numerical keypad with the extra numbers on the side you can press the decimal point button and it will snap you to your object. That's really handy. And the way to find that in the menu is object, oh no, sorry, view frame selected. And you can see it says numpad dot, which does the same thing. Um, all right, so this is sort of our book already. It's looking kind of like the right size, um, but we want to make it more book-like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make a sort of uh, an inset area where the pages would be to separate it from the cover. So what I'll do is I'll go into edit mode by pressing tab and I'm going to select one, two, three faces. So holding shift, uh, actually no, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it another way, change my mind. And this is another thing, you'll find this a lot. Often when you're 3D modeling something, you kind of think of a few different ways to make the same object. And as we'll discuss when we get more advanced, some ways give you a slightly nicer 3D model in the end than others, but there's a lot of trial and error. Okay, instead of um, that previous method I was going to do, I'm actually going to make some new edges first. Um, okay, so if you don't see this menu here, press the letter T and T hides the tool menu. And in the tool menu, I'm going to grab this button called loop cut and I'm just going to click it once there. And before I do anything else, when you use a tool, often you get some extra options here. So I'm going to make this number of cuts two cuts. And I'm also going to change the, oh no, not the fall off. Sorry, that it will be the, nope, not the smoothness. All right. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll just scale it on the Y. So if I press scale, sorry, on the Z, S for scale and the letter Z, then I can move them further apart. Okay, yep, yeah. scale Z, okay. So that's gonna be the length or the sort of the thickness of our book cover. Something like that. All right, then I'm gonna make one more loop cut for the spine of the book, which will be here. And later on when we start doing 3D printing, we'll work a little bit more exactly but I'm just gonna sort of do it by with my eyeballs at the moment. I'm gonna bring this, I'm pressing G for grab, but then I'm pressing Y just so it moves on the Y axis. And I'm just gonna slide that edge here. And just to check that it's you know more or less square, I'm going to click this um, view gimbal here. And if you click on a particular axis, it will show you your 3D model from that axis, which is what's called an orthographic view. And if you look at it here, you know, it's quite hard to tell, you know, whether this is the same distance as this. But if we look orthographically, we can see things in two dimensions so we can see it more clearly. So I'm going to press G and Y again. And just move that so we're a bit closer to a square. Okay. Now, if you wanted to make that exactly a square, what, um, one really easy way to do it is you could actually add another cube, Shift A, Add a cube, it's really big, but if I scale it down a lot, you know, I could always put that cube in this spot and kind of use it to measure my lines. Um, maybe I'll do that now. Okay, so I'll just go into 
wireframe mode. So this is another variation. We'll talk about some of this in class. If I press the letter Z and go into wireframe, all of a sudden I can see my object transparently. So it allows me to sort of check all sorts of things. So if I go into wireframe mode here, and I'm going to put my cube in the corner, I'm going to use a few snapping tools. So if we go up um, here to the magnet, that's our snapping button. I'm going to put that on vertex. So now if I move my cube around, you can see I can snap it to these different vertexes. So now I've snapped my cube to the top vertex. And what I'm going to do, I'll just turn my snapping off for a second, press Z, go back to my solid view, click on my book, and I'm just going to line up these what are called edge loops um, with my cube. Now I'm being a little particular here, but it's really just to show you the skill. So if I press G and Y, we can see that we were actually very close to that line, but now I'm going to turn on my snapping and G, Y and snap to that edge. And now I will do the same thing here. G, this time Z, snap to that edge. Now problem is, how do we do the bottom one? Well, I'm just going to grab that second cube and G, Z, put it down here, snap it down there, go back to my book, press tab, grab those edges and do the same thing. G, Z, OK. So now, if I press Z and go back to solid mode and turn my phone on silent so it stops buzzing at me, um, now I've got um, the pages separated from the spine of my book and I can delete that extra cube which is probably <laughs> hiding somewhere inside my book. So to delete an object, once I've clicked on it, I can click on it here in the outliner or I can either zoom in with the middle mouse, shift middle mouse to find it. I can just click on it. Ooh, now I've got the wrong one because it's inside. Okay, I'll click on it here and I can just press X and then delete. All right, so now that's gone and we're back to this book. So I'll turn off my snapping now because I don't need it at the moment. The shortcut for snapping is shift tab. And actually, if we hover over it, it would tell us the shortcut. See there, it says shortcut shift tab. And that's a great thing about the um, user interface of Blender. Often if you hover over things, um, it will tell you the shortcut. So that's super handy. OK, so now what I want to do is I want to make these page sections sort of set inside the book. And the way we're going to do that is using the extrude tool. OK, so I want to select three faces at once. One, shift select, two, shift select, three. And these are going to be the faces of my book. Now, if I just scaled them now, you'd see the pages will get all bent and wouldn't look quite right. So we're going to extrude and make a new face. So I'm going to press E for extrude. And then I'm just going to move. Uh, no, that's not what I want. I'm just going to undo that. I'm going to check that I didn't leave any old extrudes behind. This is one of the first things I always stuffed up when I first started 3D modeling. Sometimes you press E for extrude and you forget about it. It all looks the same. But if you grab it, there's another face hiding there. So it's always good to sort of press undo a few times just to make sure you didn't leave any faces behind. OK, so let's do that again. Left click, shift left click to select our faces. I'm going to press E for extrude, E, then left click, and then scale. And now we can see that our pages are going into the book. OK, so I'm just going to do this by eye to kind of, you know, what looks like a book. That, to me, that's way too much. That's not enough. Something that kind of looks like a book. OK, so already we have something that looks, well, kind of like a book, I think. Um, but what I want to do is, if you remember in the tutorial, I had these kind of old-fashioned books that if I go, maybe go, go to Google Chrome, old-fashioned leather book. What I'm looking at is things like this. And see how we can see the binding? We've got these little ridges. We're going to make those ridges ourselves. <coughs> Excuse me. And then for some of this other detail, we're actually going, just going to use a photograph to make that texture. So let's just pop back to Blender. All right, so let's make those ridges. I'm going to go back into edit mode. I'm going to use my loop cut tool again. And I'll make a few loop cuts. Now, what's the best way to do this, Peter? 
Let's have a think. So I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I'm just increasing the number of loop cuts. And really, we just want to sort of space them out. And I think we're going to need six because we want one area that's thick, one area that's thick, and one area that's thick. And then we just kind of need to space them out a bit. So I'm going to use the middle ones again. I'll go into my wireframe mode and I'll just drag select here. But you can see I've, I've selected too much. So I'll go back to my wireframe mode and I'm in edge select and I'm just going to do a little drag select there. And we can see I've just got those edges that I wanted. So that's good. Now I'll shift drag select here. And now I want to scale these loops to just bring them closer together. If I press S for scale, it's going to scale them in every direction, which we don't want. So again, I'm going to go S and X to just limit it to the red X axis, and I'll bring them together. And then I'm going to use our trick of using a cube again to make sure that they're all the same space. And look, there's probably another quick way I could um, make these edge loops um, be the same offset. I'm just doing it this way because it's the first thing that popped into my head. Um, <laughs> Often when making a new tutorial, you know, there's so many different ways to do things that um, I'm just going to do it this way. And then maybe I'll remake it and I'll think of all sorts of different ways I could do this better. But let's just um, do this in a nice and practical way. So I'm going to use this cube as my spacer. And then I'll go turn my snapping back on, go to my book, press tab for edit mode, just grab this edge and I've still got it set to vertex, which is good. And I'll press G and X, and I'll just snap to the vertex of that cube. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'll just turn off my snapping so you can see if it's further out, it's a little bit easier to see what I'm doing. If I turn my snapping back on, press G and X, I've snapped it to that cube. So now I've got that cube is functioning as the spacing object for where we're going to put those edges. OK, so let's just, um, I'll just move the cube up here. I'll do the same thing again. Um, I'm just going to grab these edges, turn my snapping on, GX. Um, and sometimes, you know, here it was snapping to a few different places. I just wanted to make sure it snapped onto that vertex there. I'll grab these ones again, GX. And if we go back to yeah, that looks okay to me. Okay, and let's just grab that cube again. And I'm going to bring it over here. Now, one thing I'm not doing brilliantly well, which maybe is why I could have used another method, is I'm just kind of guessing, you know, the middle point here. One excuse I'll say is that, you know, we're making an old book and maybe it didn't have to be exactly in the right position. How's that for an excuse? Okay, I'll turn on Shift Tab, turn my snapping back on, GX to snap that edge loop to my cube. GX snap that edge loop. Shift tab to turn off my snapping. And I'll just delete. Oh, sorry, I get out of uh, edit mode first, just so I'm back in object mode. And grab that cube, X, and delete it. OK, so now I'll press Z, go back into solid mode. And now if I go into edit mode, click on the object, and go into edit mode, you can see I've got these extra faces that we can use to kind of make our make our book. Now we're going to do a couple of tricks here and just see which one sort of looks the nicest. You know, if you go back to the book, you'll see that, you know, it's actually a little bit curved and that these ridges, because of how the book binding works, they kind of flatten out when you get to the top. So we're not going to make a really high detailed model here, because if you remember the original um, Vanitas um, image that we made, the books are actually in the background, so we don't see a lot of them. Um, but I just want to create that little bit of extra detail there because I think it'll look great um, when the lighting hits it in the final render. Okay, so now I'll go into face mode. Oh, sorry, face mode here, which I could also do by pressing the number three. And I'll grab one, two, three faces, and one, two, three faces and one, two, three faces. And I'm just going to extrude them out a little bit. So I'll press E, left click, just to make sure that extrudes happened. Now, if I press G, you'll see that 
I've made those extra faces. I'll right click to undo that move and I'm just going to press G and Y and just move them out a little bit just for that little bit of extra detail. Okay, so there's still a few more changes I want to make to this 3D model before we start adding the texture. The first one is if you look at the pages, when we did this um, extrude and scale of these faces, we sort of just scaled it all together, which has meant that this angle here is no longer 90 degrees. It kind of scaled, oh, let me turn that off. It kind of scaled in like that instead of scaling just you know directly on one axis and the same thing here the the pages have sort of gone up on an angle like this so I just want to snap these edges back so that we've got that relationship between the rectangular cover and the pages that are going to be in here so I'll just go into my edge select and first of all I'll grab the edges along the bottom now I can just press shift and click but I can also do what's called like a, what is it? Select by nearest path. So if I hit, what is it? Shift and command, is that right? Yep, okay. So shift and command will select all of the edges on the nearest path in between the ones you're selecting. Sometimes it gives you what you want, but sometimes, you know, if I do this, it might select something weird. Uh, but if it's a pretty sort of clear path like, like that, it's a pretty good way to do it. it saves you a bit of time. Okay, so now I'll just turn my snapping back on here. And I'm gonna press, first of all, if I look from this orthographic view, I wanna snap these edges back down to this height. So the orthographic view is good for that. And I'll just press G and I'm gonna snap it on the Z axis. So G, Z, left click. So now that is flat down there. And I'll do the same thing at the top. I'll grab this edge, shift command, and just grab that edge. Now, if you're on PC, the keyboard shortcuts might be a little bit different. You might just have to experiment a little bit. It might even be here, like, um, you know, uh, some of these. We can check that in class if you can't find that keyboard shortcut. In any case, I'll just go back to my orthographic, and I'm going to press G and Z again, and just, oh no, and Z, sorry, and just snap those up. So now we are 90 degrees here. And then I'm just going to do the same thing here. I'm going to grab this edge, but this time I'm going to snap on the Y, and I just want to snap it to sort of that corner. So G, Y, there, all that's nice and 90 degrees now. And the same thing on the other side. Grab that edge, G, Y, snap. Beautiful. Okay, so our book is looking pretty good, but there's one major problem. Uh, the problem is, I'll just turn off my snapping, is that all the edges are too sharp. If you look here, if I go into edit mode, these edges are perfectly 90 degrees, which in reality would be a perfectly sharp edge, which pretty much never exists unless it's the edge of a razor blade. And that's actually one of the things that makes computer graphics images often look unrealistic. It's the presence of sharp edges and really sharp shadows. If you look at the objects around you, most things have a slightly rounded edge because you know they exist in the physical world and they get worn down through use. So what we're going to do is we're going to round some of these edges. Now a common way to round a whole 3D model is using a subdivision surface modifier, but this is not going to work for us here because it's going to round everything way too much. Even if I turn this up, you know, we're going to um, have a lot of faces, but sort of round it in the wrong way. Another way to do it, I could do one simple. Simple means it doesn't round it at all. Then I could add another subdivision surface. Um, maybe I do two simple and one. But you can see it's not quite giving us what we want. It's rounding things that we don't want to be rounded. And it's, it's just not the correct tool for the job. So we'll get rid of those. And it's also creating a lot of extra faces that we really don't need. So instead, we're going to use a bevel. There's a few ways to do it. Um, if I use a bevel modifier, well, I'll show you what a bevel is first. If I grab this tool here, a bevel, and I just click on one edge, and I drag it, you'll see that it it what creates what we call in woodworking, like a bevel. It, it takes a 90 degree join and kind of makes it more like 45 by adding sort of two extra edges and add, adding an extra face on that sharp edge. I'm just gonna undo that. So what we sort of want is something like that bevel sort of going around the side of our book, right? 
So we can use a bevel modifier here, but I found for some tasks, we actually just want, sorry, that's the wrong one. We want to do this manually, but in later um, parts, we're gonna use these modifiers. This bevel modifier here, it's working pretty well, um, but the angles are a little bit too small. I can turn off their limiting, they'll get crazy big. If I make that smaller, you know, it's not bad, but we're gonna get some weird things happening when it's beveling bits that we don't want to bevel, and we'll end up with some geometry that will create problems for us later on. So I'm going to do this manually. Um, as an advanced method, we can actually create a vertex group and then apply this just to the um, edges we, we're going to use. But I'm just going to show you how to do that manually because I think it's a nice and simple way to start. So I'll go to edit mode. Oh, actually, let's save our file again because we've been working for a while. We don't want to lose our progress. Okay, I'll go to edit mode and I just want to grab the edges that we're going to bevel. And we're just going to do this whole top edge. I'm just shift selecting. I can try my shift command. And uh, no, it's not giving me what I want because it's going, it's cutting out these bits. So I actually need that outside bit as well. So I think that's going to look a little bit better. Whoops, I don't want that one. And I, if you shift click on an edge, it will also deselect. So shift can select a group, but also deselect. So that's kind of good, that's what we want. So I'm going to grab these and we're going to bevel it and see what we get. So I'll click on my bevel tool here. I'll left click the little handle and just sort of drag it out. And what we can do is we can actually see how it hasn't made any bad geometry. That actually all looks pretty good. So I'm going to make this number something small, but also something sort of we can reuse, a clean number, you know, not 2198, not something random. So if I put that to 0.1, if I go out of edit mode, that's not too bad. Yep, okay, let's use that 0.1. Okay, actually, maybe I want a little bit more. I'm just going to undo that and bevel it, I think maybe more like 0.014. Five, I think that's kind of better all right so now it's starting to look a little bit smoother um, now let's oh actually what if I go back sorry I'm just <laughs> thinking on my thinking on my feet if I could go here I might actually do two bevels so it's kind of rounded um, this way we might not need um, that um, that other modifier making more faces we might just make our book just with a simple bevel okay that looks pretty good. So I've got the number two here and the number 0 0.002. So let's just do the same on the other side. Now, any of you who have a computer science background will probably notice that we prob at some point, if you're doing things to the top and bottom of an object, you could also do some sort of mirroring. Um, I'll, I'll, I can show you that in class if you like, but we're actually, I'm just gonna do it this way now, keeping it simple and manual at first. But yeah, technically, you know, if you make half an object, and you don't want to model the other half, you can chop your object in half and, and flip it over and you know use one side if it's the same as the other. But here, this is pretty, pretty simple stuff, so I'll just keep it, keep it manual. Okay, so let's do that bevel again. So there's my bevel modifier, grab that, and then put that to two and put this to 0 0.002, hit enter, and there we go. Okay, so tab out of edit mode, and our book is looking kind of nice. There's one other thing I want to change, which is, see how this is perfectly straight? You know, old books don't do that. That, that gets kind of curved. So I think we can do that as well. So I'll go into edit mode, and I'm going to loop cut. And what I'm going to do is I'll make one cut here, make it a second, and then I'm going to do a nice trick. I'll just go into select mode, go into my side X view, press Z to go into wireframe and I'm just going to drag select those edges there because they're the ones I want to move. Now, <coughs> excuse me, if I go back into solid mode and if I press GY, I can kind of bend it but it all looks a little bit angular and we get this funny stuff kind of happening in here. So I'll right click to undo that and I'm going to introduce this great tool called the proportional editing mode, which what that means now, if I press G, it moves, see that circle, you might not see the circle. If if you press G and this happens, it means that that circle is huge. 
All you need to do is use your scroll wheel and make that circle smaller until you can see it. And then it moves your selection as well as a little bit of everything else. So I'll show you how we're going to use it. I'll right click, go back to our original, and I'm going to press G and Y, G and Y, so we're only moving this way. And I'm going to just sort of find a balance where when it's too big, we move nothing. When it's too small, we get these weird angles. But if I just move it a little bit and make that circle just a little bit bigger, we kind of get a nice curve, which to me looks more like the spine of a book. All right, so I think that's enough. I think that's now a pretty good looking model. And that's it. That's your first 3D modeling task. So I'm going to save this and then I'll start a new video showing you how to texture this 3D model. OK, hi, everyone. Welcome back. All right, so what we're going to do now is turn our book or our 3D model that was looking something like this into something that looks, you know, more like this. It's got a texture on it. Um, now, let's just go back into our uh, tutorial version here. Wait for that. Okay, so how do we do this? Now, this is going to be a quite a simple. Um, probably one of the most basic versions of um, texture-based uh, uh, shading. But what we're going to do in some of the other objects, we'll get into a little bit more detail. But basically what we're going to do with this book is we're going to take a photograph of the texture of a book and just wrap it around our 3D model until it fits correctly. So if you go into your browser, if you put in a phrase such as book diffuse, which can just mean um, the color values of a texture map, um, and then the word texture, 3D graphics is a very sort of popular subject online. So you're going to get images like this. Now, to explain a little bit more what's going on, if I put in something like face diffuse texture, you're going to get these weird flattened faces. So you can start to see what's going on is that diffuse maps or color maps are flat uh, two dimensional images like JPEGs that wrap around 3D models. And because the face is round, you know, face diffuse textures always look like something a little bit out of a horror movie. But if we go back to book, basically, see if you can find something that um, works for you. There are a lot of websites that will give you free textures. I've listed some of them in our course outline. Sometimes, you know, people have just popped some stuff up that you can get from Google Images without um, any, any issues. This here represents a more complex texture setup. They have a diffuse or color map, but then they also have height, specular, and normal. And we're going to look, that, look at that a little bit later. Um, but what I recommend you do is see if you can find a, you know, a free texture map somewhere. Save it on your computer. And I've been a little bit lazy. I just sort of grabbed one from online um, here. I've got a couple. I think I did this one late at night. This one actually is a proprietary one. It's got a watermark on it. And this is another free one. But you can see they've all got something in common, which is they've got a section on the image, which is the pages, and then a section which is the spine, the front cover, and the back cover of the book. And all we want to do is line up the, um, the image with um, what's called the UV map, which is basically how Blender knows where to put different parts of the image on the book. OK, so let's have a look at this. If we go back into Blender, and here's our book. Actually, now's a good time. Let's name this. If we double click on it here, instead of cube or cube 001, let's call it book underscore one. Enter. All right. I'm also going to put it in a new collection. And I'm going to press M to, to move it to a new collection and call that collection books and hit Enter. And now it's in a little, in a little folder of its own. And I can tick and untick that folder. And that'll be really useful as we start to build our scene. OK, so first we're going to go to the Shading tab here. And basically what that tab does, I have to zoom in a lot to find our book, or I can go View, Frame Selected, is it rearranges our workspace specifically for adding um, colors and textures to our objects. We can do this ourselves. You know, Any of these areas can be changed into anything else. But these tabs are just sort of pre-arranged so that we can do different tasks. It's a kind of a convenient feature. All right, so let's look at this. Look at this book here. First of all, in this um, shading menu here, Shader Editor, 
I'm going to click new. And it hasn't done anything yet, but what that's done is it's put a material onto this book. Now, if I'm in solid mode, we won't see anything. If I'm in material preview or rendered, we will see something and I'll show you what I mean. If I just click on the base color here and just randomly select a color, you'll see it changes the color of our object in both the material preview and the rendered mode. Rendered is what's going to look closest to our final output once we do the lighting. Material preview just gives us some environment lighting to sort of have a preview of the object. Okay, so if we were to just grab that picture, um, now we're going to discuss this in class of to where to put these pictures. Now if I grab my picture and pop it here, at the moment if I just connect the color line here to the base color, it's going to connect in basically not a good way. You know, some things are all stretched, some things are in the wrong place. It looks very abstract. Um, it looks kind of like something maybe from like an early computer game where, you know, I don't know, there was some, you know, memory issues and people just put some very low resolution textures on their objects or something like that. Um, but what we want is to make sure that all of our um, parts of this book are kind of in the right place. And so what we have to do is UV unwrapping. So there's a few steps. If I go into N, first thing we want to check is, is our scale all at one? So if you forgot to do that before, Control A, apply the scale. So that's the first thing we need to do with UV unwrapping. The second thing is if we go into edit mode by pressing tab, and I select all the faces, so I'm in, I'll go press three to be in face mode, a to select all and then I can press the letter U and unwrap. Well, it looks like my keycast is off. Turn that back on. U to unwrap. Now it's giving me all of these different options. Um, UV unwrapping, I've got some more tutorials from some professionals that will go into this in a lot of detail. But basically what this is doing is it's teaching Blender how to place the texture on the object using something called a UV map. So if I select all of these by pressing A, U to unwrap. Why is my key casting turned off again? Okay. U to unwrap. And I will go, let's say I do unwrap. If I press tab again, that's still not really that much better. Hasn't really put everything where we want it. Okay, so let's try that again. U to unwrap and say I do a cube projection and now I press tab it does look better but nothing's really in the right place we've sort of we've solved the stretching problem but we don't have pages where there should be pages now why did this work well if we think about it a cube projection a cube is very similar to the object we're working in and what that projection is basically doing is it will be shy, it will be projecting from all six faces of a cube looking for this face information. If we did a cylindrical projection, you know, we'll start to get some warping because our object is definitely not cylindrical. So and and sphere we'd have the same problem, all sorts of weird warping. So let's start with this cube projection, unwrap uh, cube projection. Now, we need to move some of these UVs around so they all match up with our book. So I'm going to go into the UV editing tab here. And what we want to do is have our book in one place and our texture in the other. Now, if you don't see the book texture here, just click this little drop down and there shouldn't be too much else in your scene yet. And just make sure the book texture is selected. Now, here's something cool. If I go into material preview and let's say I grab, I don't know, randomly grab a vertex here and press G to grab. Well, somewhere on our object that, there it is, will be moving how the texture is mapped onto our object. So we can kind of see what's going on here. I've got my proportional editing still, still turned on. The, these, this two-dimensional map here is telling Blender where to put the texture on the polygons, which are also two-dimensional, but how they, you know, how they all line up with the three-dimensional form of the object. Okay, so basically, if you think about it, what we want to do is have everything placed in the correct way so that it basically lines up with the book. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move all of these UV objects out of our sort of image. And I'm going to go into, this is called the island select mode. And I'm just going to see how it's divided this, this up. Because we just did an automatic unwrap and it might not have you know, unwrapped everything into kind of the most logical pieces. So this one looks like the outside of the spine of the book. I'll put that down there. Um, OK, what's this one? This one looks like the top cover. OK, Whoop, now I want to move this. OK, so the top cover, the first thing we can guess, if we look at the sort of type of face information we have here, we can see that these faces up here would be these faces along the edge here. So if I press R to rotate and then the number 90 and then enter, it's almost right. It's rotated at 90 degrees, but I want it rotated the other way. So I'll press R180 for 180 degrees. And I'm going to move this onto the part of the texture I want. Press S to scale. And basically, I'm just going to do it kind of approximately because, you know, it's a book and it's not too sort of specific. If I, if I did this with a face, if I was a little bit sort of flexible like this, the face might start to look weird. But I'm just going to now press S and Y, and I'm just going to scale this until it kind of fits over that texture map kind of neatly. And I'm, have, I'm allowing these bits here to sort of overlap with that seam there. So now if I look here, isn't that nice? Kind of that, that worn part of the book is also where that edge is. So that's nice. So if, I, if you can't see your UVs here, that just means you've accidentally gone back into object mode. So press tab to go back into edit mode. If you can't see them, it could also be that you haven't selected any faces. So to see all of your UVs here, you have to have all of the faces selected here. So press A to select them all. And I'm just going to grab another island. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to guess this is probably, yep, the underside. So let's do the same. R90. And I'm just going to press G for grab, S for scale, and I'm going to scale it so that its width is kind of correct. And then scale on the y-axis so its height is kind of correct. All right, great. Um, now, what else have we got? If I press this island and I look at my book. OK, yep, that's one of the first pages areas. So basically, I'm going to we can see that curve and that curve probably means that that's where the binding is. And you know, it's a little non-specific on the image I've used here, but maybe I'll just, again, this is going to be in the background of our shot. So we won't see it that specifically. I can also just grab these vertex. Oh no, I need to go into vertex select mode. I could grab these vertexes and press G and X and just kind of slide them along. If I tab there, that sort of looks OK to start. Let's see what else, what other um, UV islands we've got here. What's this one if I press G? OK, so that's the spine. It looks like it's split up the spine of our book. So I, we might just want to line that up a little bit. Um, what's this one? OK, so that's this back area here. I'm actually just going to rotate this 90, scale it, and I'm just going to use the same part of the texture map that I use for the cover of the book because it's just that sort of leather um, leather texture. What the only thing about this is it's um, oh, actually if I scale and Z, I can I should probably line these up. You can actually stitch these together, but I'll show you that in some more advanced tutorials. But if I line it up. This texture will repeat and tile. So even if I go outside the texture map, if you see here, I'm still getting, whoops, I'm still getting the texture here because this will just repeat in the outside space. So I'll just kind of put it there. Here, I'm guessing that's probably one of the inside bits. Probably up in there. Yep. OK. So that's also going to be that leather texture. So that's really not going to be very visible. So I'll just use this part of the texture map. I will R90 enter, and then I'll just scale it, and I'll just sort of put it on that area because it's just going to be that leather. This will be the same R90 enter, 
and you know we can even probably just put it in the same place because it's not going to be a really easy to see part of our model and it's probably good enough for now if this was something that um, is really visible in your scene we might have to start you know doing a few more things like you know adding a few more bevels and maybe even adding some more geometry um, so there's more detail but right now it's kind of a background object and I, I chose it for your first 3d task because it's not too complicated so now this is obviously the other part of the, the pages so I'll just scale it down so that it's the same height as the others because I think you know if you have this a totally different size it'll look super weird so you kind of want to have them approximately all in the same um, scale even if we're not like joining them all together properly and I'll just go into the vertex mode and I might just stretch this out a little bit GX there whoops go back into my island select now this one is okay so that's more of the leather there so I guess that's the same as this one I'm gonna do these at the same time I'll just drag select both of them um, I will rotate them 90 degrees and I'll just I think I can just put them there I think we can probably get away with something like that and then here what have we got I think this will be more of the spine which we do want to be a little bit more careful on is it yep okay it's that area there so I'm gonna just line these up so that we can sort of see what we're dealing with a bit better so this one this is the central piece this is okay so this is this side this, oh, this will be the last of the pages, actually. Let's just finish that off. Scale that down. Now, it's the same. If I want to pan around here, I'm just pressing Shift and Middle Mouse. Whoops. And then I'll just S, X, and then G, X to kind of move it in place. That's OK. And you might be finding that, you know, your you have to think quite a lot about which keys you're pressing at the beginning. But going through this exercise of doing this kind of boring bit of UV, UV unwrapping, I think it's also good just to sort of get you a little bit more comfortable with um, the keys that you press all the time in Blender. Okay, so that's the middle. So we've got something like boom, 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 something like that. And then this one's the end. And this one... Who knows what that is? Can we find it? Okay, good. So that's another bit of leather. Oh, I'm going to put that here, R90. And I'm going to put it, I'm just going to sort of line it up with the outside of that book just in case it does kind of tile nicely. And what's this one? I think this is another part of the spine. Yep. Okay, so that's the one that goes here, I think. Yep, and what's this one? These might be these little gaps. I'm guessing they could be these little bits in here. Can we see them? Oh, there it is. It's that little um, part of leather there. So I'm just gonna pop that on the leather. And this is probably the one on the other side. Is it here? Yep, that's it. I'll just pop it there. And then this curved one, what shape would that be? It's probably something like that, I'm guessing. Is it? Oh, there's a few of them all on top of each other. Okay, that's what they are. Those, I'll just undo that because they were quite nice when they're on top of each other. Those, I think, are these little sections here. So if I drag select here, yeah, that's what they are. Okay, so we'll treat them all all the same we won't bother stitching those okay so those bits actually sort of go in all of these little gaps here but we'll um we'll solve that later first of all let's just have a look at the spine now i'm going to grab all of these and just rotate them r90 so they're facing the right way for the spine now one tricky thing is that we don't know if these are all facing kind of the right direction up and down um, one common thing to do is actually to put on a texture like um, like this 
And this we use a lot when we're UV unwrapping to see whether things are facing the right way up and down. Um, so I'll show you that in class, but this here, we can just sort of work it out kind of visually to see which things are facing which way, and I'll show you how. So you know, if I just go into the vertex, select here, grab this. Okay, so that is, actually, I'm just gonna rotate these again just so we're facing uh, 180, just so we're kind of facing the same way as the, um, as the spine, it'll be a little easier. So if I go here, grab my vertexes, so that is the inside. So actually I do want to rotate this 180. So now that is there. This one, where's that? Okay, yep, that is this one, it's just a little dark. Yep, that is here, okay. Now is it facing the right way? Press one to go into vertex. Nope, it's flipped. So R180, there we go. This one, that's flipped as well because I could see it was moving the right hand side. So R180, there we go. So I'm just kind of doing a bit of a lazy, lazy way to fix this. If I had my sort of alphabet texture, we could see really easily which way all the letters were facing. But sometimes it, you know, sometimes we do things that are just a little bit more convenient at the time. Um, uh, 180. They're probably all flipped, I'm guessing. Yep. So uh, 180. Yep, so, okay, so the whole thing, the whole spine was kind of, each face was flipped around the wrong way. Okay, so now, basically, I wanna put all of this onto that spine. So if I R90, and I just, I'm just gonna bring it up, and I'm gonna sort of scale it until its width is correct. And then I'm gonna move each piece I'll go into my island select, GY, move it up. Now I'm gonna put this over one of the um, one of the ridges. I'm gonna put this, I guess, over one of our sort of colored sections here. That's gonna be over a ridge. Now you can see, even though this book has a different number of ridges to our model, it doesn't really matter. We can just use the texture information and kind of pick and choose what we want a little bit. And I think it'll still make sense. So now I'm just gonna move each of them. So I'm gonna scale this, make it a little bit wider and then scale it on the Y. And I kind of wanna get it just where that curve happens. And I'm gonna scale this one down a little bit. And what I hope is that this little sort of overlappy trick should have the the um, the geometry of our book match the texture enough so that when it's in the background of our still life what is actually a two-dimensional image SX looks like it's kind of real and that it's um, SY and that it's you know, that this detail that's actually coming from a photograph, we're sort of faking the idea that all of this detail is actually on the model itself. Whereas in terms of the 3D modeling we did, we, we kept it really simple. So it's just a kind of, I think it's a nice trick basically. Um, S, uh, Y, let's get more of this. And then let's just, I, don't know if I, might, I might scale that down a bit on the Y. Okay, so now if I press tab, Let's have a look and see what we've got. Looks okay. I think it's gonna be good enough for us to, to start because once we get more into our rendered setup, we might find um, you know things that aren't good enough, we can come back to it. Um, and I'll talk about shading smooth and shading flat a little bit later. But okay, so congratulations, you've made your first um, 3D model of a book, all right. Okay, and the final thing we're going to do in exercise one is we're going to make a render. 
And a render is one of the most important ways that we output things from Blender. All right, so let's go back to our, I don't know, how about we use the animation tab? Because the animation tab has a camera view here and it also has our kind of 3D workspace here. And these things can change around quite easily. So if I've got my camera selected, um, what I want to do is here, I want to go view uh, cameras, oops, sorry, view cameras, set active object as camera. So now we know we're looking through that camera. So if I've got the camera selected and I press N and I put all of these numbers to zero, we'll see that the camera is sort of right on top of our book and that's kind of what we're seeing. And if I go to material preview, we'll see we're kind of inside the book. Um, similarly, if I put the rotation and everything else, I'll just press delete to zero. Now we're sort of looking away from our book. If I press GZ, we're looking flat at the book. And if I start to rotate the camera, I'm rotating the view. Okay, one clever way that can position the camera quite easily, if I press N over the camera view and click on the view tab, and I say lock the camera to the 3D cursor, then that, nope, sorry, <laughs> I clicked the wrong thing. All right, let's just um, get my view back there. Now I accidentally panned and I'm looking out of the camera again. I wanted this one, lock camera to view is what that would usually say if my screen was a little bigger. All right, okay, so I'll press N and now if I press the middle mouse button and I rotate here, you can see I'm rotating the camera and that's kind of more like what we wanted. All right, and I'm just gonna press the Z here and just move everything a little bit further away. That's what my camera sort of here. I'm gonna look here and just move it up, rotate it down. And with the camera selected, I can go into my settings here and I'm actually going to increase this number here to, to zoom into my camera, to zoom into my, sorry, my book a little more. All right, um, something like that. That's, that's fine for now. So that's what our, our render is gonna look like. Now, if I press Z here and go into rendered mode, things look very flat. Um, and if I turn, cl click on the light and turn this 1000 down to zero, it doesn't actually go completely black. We've still got some light in the scene. So that's because Blender by default has some light coming from the environment. So at first, we're just gonna turn this completely off because it's just a nice way to start thinking about lighting when you know exactly where your light's coming from. So if we look at our light, if I've got my light selected here and I zoom out, we can see that our light is a long way from the, um, from the book and it's also set to zero. So first of all, I'm gonna bring the light a lot closer to the book by pressing G and just moving it closer. Now I'm gonna put in a much smaller number like five. And if we do that, we can see that we're starting to get something more like what I had in my final still life, which is this sort of one point lighting. When it was a long way away and very strong, it was harder to get this variation. But now we've got this, you know, similar to candlelight sort of feel. And I'm just gonna grab my, my light, sort of bring it around the front like this. And I might even bring it down a little bit, something like that. Okay. And I guess what we could do I'm going to do something a little bit more um, complicated later, but I could just duplicate this light by pressing Shift D, and then I've got a second light, and I could just put it down so we see a little bit of the front of the book as well, but I'll make this a lot less strong. I'll make that sort of 1 or even 0.5, because without, this is what's called a fill light, without that fill you have this weird sort of blank area. Okay, so that's kind of nice. The next thing is I wanna have some sort of surface for our book to sit on. So I'm gonna press Shift A, make a cube. A cube is now enormous. Um, let's make it all at the moment. If I drag across these numbers and just press one, it makes all of them one. I'm gonna press Tab and I'm going to make a box for our still life by deleting three of these faces. X, well actually maybe just two. X, delete faces. Now we've got this box here. Um, we're gonna have to change our view a little bit, that's okay. I'm gonna press G and Z and just bring our box up onto our camera. I think it's a bit big on the Y, so I'm gonna go scale Y and squish it a little bit. 
make it a little bit longer on the X. And you can see it's starting to appear with the camera. And I think also I want to change the angle of my camera now because this is the box we're going to later use for our still life. So, okay, let's just rotate the camera a bit. I'm doing this from the top view just because it's easy to see. And I'm going to do that. Let's have a look from the side. I'll grab my camera, bring it up, maybe angle it down a little bit, something like that. And I'm just going to look at these numbers and see there's a rotation of minus 1.5 degrees on the Y. That's why that's just a little bit crooked. So I'll just make that zero. So now we're sort of straight and it's less <laughs> disturbing to look at. Um, and so now I'm going to put my book flat on the ground. I can either look up close and just G and Z, or I can look from the front here and just you know line it up there. So that's cool. Um, now to make a stack of books, what I could do is I could just duplicate this book, press Shift D. If I move my mouse, it'll duplicate sort of wherever I move the mouse. I'm just going to undo that. Shift D and grab it and move it up. So like that. And then I might rotate it on the Z axis to start to make a pile of books. Now, this is where your creativity will have to take over. Whatever texture you have on the book, that can be part of your artwork. You know, what's the title of the book? But also, to me, it's a little bit weird to have two of the exact same book, right? So you can see in my original example, I changed, um, if we go into the shading, if I, I should probably title this, I'll call it book shader one. But if on this one, I got rid of this and made a new one and called it book shader two, we might add in a different texture map. Um, just so, and we, we don't have to do all the UV unwrapping again. It should still have its UVs like we made before. We might just have to move them around a little bit depending on what the new texture is. So if I go here and go back to my book textures and where were they? Book, 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 books, and grab a different one like this one. And that's on book shader two and connect the color to the color. I'd have to go into my UV editing and just sort of you know, shift everything around a little bit so that it sort of was, you know, um, in the right place again and, and so on and so on and so on. But, um, you know, that's that's one thing we can do. And here, because it's got some writing on it, I just have to make sure it, how to pick up Fair Maidens. Okay, so this is clearly from a some stupid computer game. All right. Um, but yeah, you can probably find far more interesting textures um, than the ones that I've just grabbed online. Um, but yeah, so if I grab, you know, my, my book um, spines and sort of start to line them up very lazily here, we'll start to have like different books in our book stack. I'll go back to my animation here. And now we've got two books. A um, couple of other things to change before we do our render. I'm going to turn a few things on here. I'm going to turn on our ambient occlusion. Um, our bloom and our screen space reflections and our I think shadows we want to do in our light. Let's just go into our light here and turn contact shadows on. So that's given us those shadows under the book and here. And now we're starting to look, you know, a bit more interesting. We'll talk in class a bit more about what all of these render settings mean, um, but that's not really what we need for this tutorial. So I'll just leave it at that. Finally, um, if we go into the output here, this is where 3D gets really cool. We can make any resolution we want because we're not relying on a camera or anything like that. This is um, all completely fake, it's made up. If I go here and go into solid mode, you know, it's just 3D objects. Um, so we could make a huge image or, or a small resolution image by default it's set at 1920 by 1080 pixels. Um, its output format is PNG. Now, when we make an animation, we're going to have to change this so that it goes in the correct place. But to preview it for, for the moment, I can just go render, render image. And it's going to render that image that we've got. One nicely textured book and one <laughs> less light, nicely textured book because I haven't done the pages yet. But OK, so that's how to render your first image. Um, and that's also a good way to test if you know your lighting is looking good and, and things like that. 
So I'm going to stop this tutorial here and then we'll pick it up in exercise two where we'll start to build more objects in the scene. Okay, see you soon.